Welcome back to the webinar, Money Management for Traders, 12 Ways to Lose Money in the Stock Market. Here's author Bob Joyner. And here are your next, uh, next four points, Bob. Thanks, Rick. Um, number nine, holding an under-diversified under portfolio overnight. Let's say you had shorted the stock and you had put all your money on the line and uh, you were not balanced in your portfolio, then all of a sudden that stock gaps down the next morning. Uh, you can be severely hurt. Uh, and uh, just to warn people not to get in that situation, um, don't, don't put all your eggs in your basket if you're holding stocks overnight, and that's one of the reasons why I very seldom do that, actually. Uh, number 10, letting small losses turn into big losses. Uh, that's what uh, Trader Joe did here. He did both 10 and 11. He not only let the small loss turn into a big loss, okay, but he also let that loser languish. Um, I love that phrase, letting losers languish. Um, but what it is, is, you know, and again, I'm sorry that we don't have time just to go into a lot of detail. All these things point out, uh, Rick, the psychological aspects of a trader. Um, it's, it's not so much having to do with, with how to trade and how to get in and get out of a stock as much as it is that, that we trade from our personality. And that, um, for example, for me, I, my background is I'm an entrepreneur. I own small businesses, manage businesses. And uh, it's my personality bent to, um, to be very hopeful about a situation. It's my bent to to expect the best of a situation, and and I like to see things grow. But because of that, I have a hard time when something doesn't go the way that I thought it would of giving up. I want to hang in there. I want to be tough. I want to hang in there and say, well, it'll get, it'll get better, just like Joe was thinking to himself. Well, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> and as a trader, you've, you've got to recognize that, that part of the reason you're making losses has to do with who you are and your psychological bent. Um, and you got to recognize that. And again, we're going to show you something uh, in just a second about how to help you, help you with that. Uh, number 12 is failing to review your trades so you can learn from your mistakes. Huge one. I mean, if I had to say which two are the biggest things, I'd say number one, not trading with a strategy, and number 12, failing to review your trades so you can learn from your mistakes. So our time's going really quick here. Y'all going to get a, a copy of this? Oh, I, I think our audience is patient. Um, okay. <laughs> there's uh, quite a few with us, and uh, yeah. we have a. They might not know this, but we have a little meter here that shows their attentiveness, and it's basically whether they're fooling around doing something else or actually listening to you. And they're listening we're to watching. you, Bob. So <laughs> we're watching. <laughs> okay. Um, well, good, good. I'm, I'm hoping this helps. What I recommend to people is you go to that URL and you print the thing out and you thumbtack it on your wall. I don't care if it's not pretty. Thumbtack it over your computer, wherever you're doing your trading, and think to yourself, am I doing this? Am I doing any of these? And am I doing them because there's something about me that's making me do this? And is it something that I can correct? Okay, is it something I can change to correct the situation and stop it from happening? And, and the answer is always yes. There's always something that you can do differently, and we just make, mix things up a little bit. One of the ways to prevent that Joe could have prevented from having a big loss is what I call the stop and straddle, okay? Um, and bear with me trying to explain this to you. I actually touched on this on our last, last webinar, Rick, about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but I want to explain it because we got a lot of questions about it and people kind of shaking their heads and said, what the heck are you talking about? And it's it's kind of different. But it can really help you to prevent having big losses. Um, and it starts by asking this simple question. If the stock does not go in the way that you thought it was going to go, then guess what? You were wrong. <laughs> okay? You were wrong. If you bought a stock, you thought that, that let's say Joe here, bought the stock right here at the line, and he thought it was going to go up. Well, observation shows that he was wrong, okay? So if I'm Joe, I'm looking at my charts, and I'm looking at these candles continuing just to dive further and further, I realize, you know, I'm not right. Okay, and this is a 15-minute chart, so each of those candles are 15-minute char- uh, candles. So somewhere in here, um, if he's looking at a five-minute chart, 
uh, he's going to realize, you know, this thing is not going the way that I thought it was going to go. You got it at the wrong point. Okay. So a stop and a straddle is this. What you want to do, if you're having some big losses and this is an issue for you, then what you want to do is this. When that stock goes down to 1% or 2% below what you thought it was going to go, you sell half your shares and you immediately take a reverse course on half of those shares. So you're actually going to short the same number of, of shares that you are holding long. And you're going to have a split decision on your, on your trading platform. You're going to be, let's say, if Joe had bought 200 shares, he's going to sell 100 shares when it drops 1% or 2%. He's going to immediately short those 100 shares. But what he's done is he's stopped his loss at 2%. He's not going to lose any more than 2% on the rest of his money. He already lost some, but not a huge amount yet. So he's, he's stopping the bleeding by stopping at half point, just selling half the shares, shorting that same amount. Okay, so now he's holding two opposing opinions. He's had holding a hundred shares long, and he's holding a hundred shares short. At that point, you have two ways that you can go. You can first walk around the room and and breathe a little bit because you've stopped the bleeding. That's the big part. The other part you can do is you can wait, you can look at the charts again if you're trading charts like I teach and trading the S curve and you can say, well, you know, okay, yeah, maybe I got in too soon. And you wait for more of a confirmation that the bottom actually has hit. So here, um, if he's studying the charts, these are the exact things that I look at. He's going to see that the MACD finally did the bottom out and started to cross over here. He's going to see the stochastics uh, rose sharply right at the same point. He's going to see that the RSI rose str strongly right there. And he's going to see that uh, it's heading into the Bollinger Bands here with an increasing RSI, which is a huge factor right there. Um, so at this point, he can pretty well say, now that he maybe is reflecting a little bit on this chart, he can pretty much say that... Uh, you know, the stock has bottomed out. So at that point, he could actually cover his short position if he wanted to, and he would make money on that short position. And if he wanted to, if he's an active trader, he could actually go ahead and reverse and buy more shares at that new lower number and do what's called averaging down, which is a fairly risky thing, but in this case, it would have worked, okay? Um, he could have bought that 100 shares back at that new lower price, giving him an average share price somewhere in here. And then he would have gotten out the same day as I recommend um, for a gain on those 200 shares up in here. So he would have taken a losing bad choice situation and remedied it by that strategy I just mentioned. I call it the stop and straddle. I don't know if anybody's ever done it before or not. It's kind of a crazy way to trade. But it sure beats the heck out of holding the stock in a losing position and letting the loser lagger until you get all the way down here, and then you just throwing up your arms and say, "Okay, I give up." I sell. Mm -hmm. That's when you're yelling at the computer. <laughs> yeah, well, you're yelling at the computer all the way down here. <laughs> but um, I hope people were able to catch that. What I just talked about. It's called the stop and straddle. Sell half, short the same amount. When you get down here, or you can wait till the next day until you have a whole nother day set up if you want to. You know, let it go for the day and then just wait till the next day the S curve sets up. But either way, you want to you want to cover your short obviously at the bottom, and then you want to uh, buy at the new low and then trade back up again and make a profit. And that's how Joe could have remedied that situation for a same day trade. Uh, it would have counted, of course, as two day trades. So for, if there are people on the call who um, do not have 25000 equity, you got to realize that's two of your day trades for that five-day period right there. Okay. The other way you can do that is you could uh, hold to the next day, and it would only count as one day trade. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but, but that's one little point right there. Okay. It's a way to stop the bleeding. It's a way if you're losing money, it's a way to kind of stop, especially if you're new. Um, yeah, you're not going to make a huge amount of money, but you know, making a one percent gain is a whole lot better than losing eight percent over an eight-day period. You're listening to a special webinar from Wealthfire with author Bob Joyner, brought to you by First Hour Trading, where you can sign up for a free trial offer for Manny Backus's First Hour Trading System. Stay with us as the webinar continues. <laughs> 